This video is going to be an introduction to the section on organic synthesis. By the end of this introduction, you should be able to identify the following reaction types. Addition, elimination, oxidation reduction, condensation hydrolysis and substitution. You should know the difference between heterolytic and homolytic bond fission. Be able to explain what is meant by terms nucleophile and electrophile and start to understand the use of curly arrow notation. Right, so far in Unit 2 we've completed molecular structure, molecular orbitals and stereochemistry. So we now come to 2.4 synthesis. Now this section in itself is probably more than half the whole of Unit 2, since this is a huge section. So in fact, I've split it up into about eight different sections. Uh, we've got the introduction, which is the lecture we're doing at the moment. Then we're going to look at seven different homologous series. Alkenes, haloalkenes, alcohols, ethers, carboxylic acids, amines, and aromatic hydrocarbons. In each case, the plan is more or less we look at what is this homolog homologous series, how do you name the compounds, how is it produced, and then we look at the physical properties, and most importantly, we look at the major chemical reactions undergone by that reaction type. So that's roughly what we're going to do for each of these seven homologous series. In this introduction at the moment, I'm just going to introduce you, as the name suggests, to a variety of reaction types and concepts that we're going to use throughout these other seven units. It's probably not essential that you completely understand everything in the introduction at the moment, but you can always refer back to it when these concepts are introduced through, throughout the other topics. Okay, so, right, firstly, just want to remind you and introduce a few new reaction types which will come across throughout 2.4. Some of these you've seen before, some of them you haven't. So an important reaction is going to be the addition reaction, which you have come across in National 5 and higher, where you just add a molecule across a double, or in this case, even a triple bond. So... For example, here's, here's a bromine being added across a carbon-carbon double bond. So you break the double bond and add on the molecule, that atoms, in this case bromine atoms. So you've seen that before. What you haven't seen before is elimination, which is a very simple reaction, but it's basically the exact opposite to addition. So, for example, if you remove uh, water from ethanol and turn it into ethene, so we remove an OH from one carbon and an H from the other carbon and produce ethene plus water. That's an example of an elimination reaction. So it's really just the exact opposite of a addition reaction. Substitution reaction, that's new. So it's where one atom as a molecule is replaced by another. So for example, in this case, we replace the bromine with a hydroxide ion. So you end up with this alcohol and a bromide ion. It's a very important reaction for haloalkanes. So a substitution reaction, just replace one atom with another atom or ion. Condensation reaction you should be very familiar with. Okay. So it's joining together two or more molecules with the elimination of a small molecule. That small molecule is very often water, but not always. So for example, here's two amino acids joining together with the loss of the H from one molecule and the OH from the other. 
So you end up with two molecules joined together and water also produced. So this is how you make proteins, this is how you make esters. So we've come across this quite a lot. And of course the opposite of condensation is hydrolysis. It's where you split up a molecule using water. So here's a amide being split up with water into the carboxylic acid and the amine. Oxidation we've come across before in terms of organic chemistry. It's when you get an increase in the oxygen to hydrogen ratio. And we mainly came across it in the oxidation of alcohols. So here we see an alcohol, it's a primary alcohol, being oxidised to an aldehyde, which can be further oxidised to carboxylic acid. And uh, as you see the oxygen to hydrogen ratio increases from 1 over 6 to 1 over 4 to 1 over 2. So that's oxidation. And Reduction is the reverse reaction. So we started from there, went from the ethanoic acid to ethanol, that would be reduction. Ethanol to ethanol would be reduction. And you see a decrease in the OTH ratio. Okay. In all these reactions, bonds are broken and bonds are made. There's actually two different ways bonds can break. By far and away the most common and the one that we will use 99.9% .9 of the time is called heterolytic fission. So remember this line here represents a covalent bond which is a shared, is a shared pair of electrons. So imagine what two electrons there. In heterolytic fission both these electrons go on to be, which is presumably the most electronegative of the two atoms. So we end up, B's got a negative charge and A's got a positive charge. Remember when this bond was formed, one electron was donated by A and one electron was donated by B. But when it split up, both the electrons are gone to B. So B ends up with one electron more than it needs. So it's got a negative charge and A's left with a positive charge. So that's the way bonds normally break up, and that's the way we normally look at it. Very occasionally you get homolytic fission, and we came across this briefly in the high when we're talking about uh, damage to the skin by UV radiation. So in this case, when the bond broke, one electron went to Y, and one electron went to X. So it was just the exact reverse of the normal bond making process. So if we imagine it was a chlorine molecule, okay there's your normal chlorine molecule, here's the shared pair of electrons, and when it split up this electron went back to this chlorine atom, and this electron went back to this chlorine atom. So producing two normal chlorine atoms no charge, they're neutral now, but these atoms don't like being, uh, well they haven't got full electron shell so they're not very stable. So they're called free radicals and they're very reactive because these chlorine, at these chlorine free radicals are going to want to react with something to get a full outer shell. So when it splits up, so one electron goes to one atom, and one electron goes to the other atom. That's homolytic fission, uh, by far away, much less common than the heterolytic fission. Okay, I want to briefly introduce nucleophiles and electrophiles. We'll come across these an awful lot throughout this section. Nucleophiles, let's look at them first. The atoms, or groups of atoms, which are rich in electrons and therefore are going to be attracted to a positively charged centre. For example, the nucleus. No, the nucleus is positive. So, nucleophile loves positive charges. And they do that because either they've got a negative charge or they're rich in electrons. So, the sorts of things that you'll find 
you come across as being nucleophiles are negatively charged ions they're going to be attracted to positive centers so things like these are things that will come across a lot hydroxide ions chloride ions and this is cyanide ion okay we'll use them quite a lot in this section all nucleophiles also molecules with lone pairs like the ammonia the non-bonding lone pair on the nitrogen it's attracted towards a positive center so this is a good nucleophile or even the more electronegative part of a polar molecule for example hf is a very polar molecule f's got far higher electronegativity than h so that negative end slightly negative end of the molecule can act as a nucleophile okay electrophiles well they're the opposite they love electrons they love negative charges so it's atoms or a group of atoms which are deficient in electrons and so are attracted to places that are rich in electrons so an important electrophile will come across a lot is a carbocation that's a name we use for a carbon atom with a positive charge they're very short-lived they're very reactive so they tend to react to things so here we see various organic molecules in which you've got a positive charge on the carbon so they're called carbocations or sometimes we call them carbonium ions uh, so let me write that up as well sometimes they're called carbonium ions and they are very good electrophiles other positively charged ions for example H plus ion or the ammonium ion or the positive end within a poly polar molecule okay so here's a carbonyl group uh, the oxygen is far more electronegative than the carbon so the carbon is slightly positive so again that can act as an electrophile now it's just interesting to note that sometimes within the same molecule the same molecule can be both a nucleophile and an electrophile so for example water okay, the oxygen is slightly negative so that will be attracted to positive charges so that's a nucleophile whereas the hydrogens are slightly positive so they'll be attracted to electron rich areas so they're electrophiles so electrophiles and nucleophiles will come across them a lot and they get the reactions of these homology series Finally, I want to look at these curly arrows, which we're going to use quite a lot to explain how chemical reactions are happening. Okay. So, in this diagram, what we're showing here is the heterolytic fission of this bond here. So we're saying the two electrons here are going on to the bromine. So the product of that would be this carbonium ion, C+, plus, and the bromide ion, Br-. Minus. So the arrow starts, maybe just extend that a wee bit, the arrow starts at the covalent bond where the electrons are and it finishes up at the atom those are like two electrons are moving to. That double head of the arrow, I think that has been two electrons. Each part of the arrow bit is one electron. Right, so that's the start again. Okay. In this case, what the arrow is showing is that two electrons, because we've got two parts to the head of the arrow, are moving from this oxygen of the hydroxide and it's not quite going to the carbon but it's going towards the carbon 
So it's kind of going to a midpoint between the oxygen and the carbon. And this is showing the formation of a covalent bond. It's a date of covalent bond. Oh, that's particularly important because both electrons have been provided by the hydroxide ion. So this is showing the formation of a bond. So there's that bond being formed there between the OH and the carbon atom. Okay. So we're going to use these curly, this curly arrow, arrow notation to describe the mechanism of many of the reactions we look at. And uh, hopefully by the end of the unit you have mastered it. Just to go back to homolytic fission, which we won't use very often, but you notice when it's homolytic fission, the arrow only has one kind of point to it. It hasn't got the double points. It's got one point to show that one electron is going that direction and one electron is going in the other direction. So for that double header arrow on it, you know that means two electrons are going there. Okay, so that's just a general introduction to a lot of concepts that we're going to do in more detail as we go through Unit 2.4. It's not the end of the world, we haven't totally mastered them at the moment. Just refer back to this lecture as and when it's important to you. So, you should now be able to identify the following reaction types. Addition and elimination. Oxidation and reduction condensation and hydrolysis, and substitution. You should know the difference between heterolytic and homolytic bond fission. You should be able to explain what is meant by the terms nucleophile and electrophile. And you should start to understand the use of curly arrow notation.